Hello guys, uh, welcome again to the channel. Today I want to share with you this uh, lucid dreaming course. Lucid dreaming is a very interesting topic and is uh, becoming part of my program to improve my life. Uh, I started this program back in December 2021. I have been involved in um, self-improvement for a long time since I was 18 but I had some difficult years and I stopped practicing this so I just recently saw uh, some material from someone in the uh, YouTube community which was offering some training for lucid dreaming but he was giving some basic information maybe some interesting advice but overall his course was uh, paid so I decided uh, to create this course to give people enough information to have lucid dreams you know this method is very effective is very simple and it, it has worked for me in the past and as part of this um, course I want to also challenge myself to continue doing it uh, every day and I will I will report back and create some videos for interesting developments in this uh, particular topic so let's get started with this. So what is lucid dreaming? Uh, it's the realization of the dream state. So you are able to notice that you're dreaming. So this uh, has uh, some uh, interesting uh, benefits. So what happens is that uh, as part of this realization, you gain or regain some consciousness and you're able to change the course of the storyline the storyline being what is currently happening in the dream which sometimes is uh, a little bit arbitrary and uh, follows uh, different psychological uh, purposes for for why the storyline is in the way it is but mostly is uh, unpredictable and uh, when you are in a dream you don't feel like uh, you're in control so that's what happens with lucid dreaming with lucid dreaming you become in control of uh, what is going on in the dream and you can change the direction of uh, what is going on there and also the main thing from the point of view of the awareness of the day daytime awareness is to have a persistent memory being able to remember what was done while you were dreaming after waking up because of this particular um, uh, let's say issue here a lot of people are convinced that uh, they don't dream or they have never dreamt in all their lives but uh, the reality is that everyone dreams every night if you are a person who sleeps you dream this is absolutely 100 percent true in all cases so if you are a person who sleeps you're dreaming every night without without any exception this is a natural process and whatever you're dreaming it is uh, related to the cultural influence of uh, where you are growing uh, your experiences as a child and also your own individual uh, experiences uh, that have uh, separate uh, aspects from culture and there are some uh, psychological implications of what you're dreaming including symbology and symbology is also affected by your own individuality and by culture so people who were grown, growing up in similar culture will have similar dreams however each of them will have a specific kind of dream which will be different from everyone else so then we have the aspect of different kinds of dreams including the unpleasant dreams such as nightmares pleasant dreams or usual dreams ordinary dreams that everyone has every day and these are the most common ones there are also some prophetic dreams people who have seen um, future events during their dream and uh, later become a reality in the world in the physical world so these are the <coughs> the main the main kind of uh, dreams that uh, most people can can experience so this method uh, works in a way backwards 
So we will start from, from the end of the dreaming process. And the dreaming process uh, is, uh, stops when we wake up. So this is when this method will start. And this method starts with the memory. We are going to fix our memory so we are able to remember our dreams. And this is the method. Yes, after waking up, we will try to stay still after waking up, so don't move any sudden or big movements are, are to be avoided. Uh, if you can remain in the same position, you will try to do it, not to move your body at all. This is the general advice. And you are to remain relaxed and try not to fall asleep again. So, particularly for me, in my case, uh, what I do is uh, when I wake up, I very calmly will change my position and lie, lie face up because in this position I, I have very much difficulty trying uh, to fall asleep. So, in this position I can relax, but I'm almost certain that I will not fall asleep. So. Whatever works for you, if you can avoid falling asleep in the whatever position you're in, try to do it. You know, if you fall asleep again, doesn't matter, you will just need to restart. So after that, then you are going to use a mantra. This mantra is, is uh, Raum Gaum, and it's a very simple mantra. And you are to pronounce this mantra inside your mind, so you don't need to vocalize it. Actually, maybe it's even better if you don't vocalize it at all. I have never done it and it really works. And how you pronounce this mantra is uh, like this. Raum, Gaum, Raum, Gaum. So as you see, it's very simple, nothing really complex. Uh, and this mantra helps you to bring the memories back and because you were just uh, dreaming and suddenly wake up uh, this mantra will help you remember things remember things from your from your subconscious memory which uh, subconscious mind and the memory that is stored there usually is disconnected from the daytime memory or from our conscious mind as we call it so in this state when we are between sleeping and waking up the conscious mind it can be connected with the with the subconscious mind and this is what will help us uh, remember the the dreams so what you're doing is uh, you are relaxed you are doing the mantra and then memories start to come they will come as uh, flashes uh, sometimes like uh, small images or you just start to remember a story and the main thing is to follow the story and try to see the entire timeline of the story try to see the, the full story if you continue to do this uh, you will um, seem to realize that there are different stories uh, some people call each of the stories a dream on its own is open to interpretation yes uh, be aware that can there can be more than one story and they somehow some, sometimes randomly uh, jump from one point to the other and sometimes the story changes uh, very dramatically so just try to follow the story and again try to avoid falling asleep again and then you are going to repeat the process until you can remember as much as you possibly can and um, sometimes it's very little what you can remember depending on your practice in this process but uh, the main thing is to start so as we progress in the practice uh, you will start to remember more every day and this is um, what we what we want to accomplish so even if the first day you only remember a small piece, don't be, don't feel discouraged. This is okay. It's just uh, how the process works. And I have here this suggestion that you should use anchors or key elements, names, uh, places, and usual circumstances to help remembering. And these are basically. Um, 
interesting part about the dream, something that calls your attention. So the main thing is to uh, see the dream and try to uh, see the things that are more unusual, the things that are more interesting, the things that uh, really are different from everything else. And this will help you remember. Re what we try to do is to transfer somehow, if uh, this helps you understand it, transfer the memories from the subconscious mind to the conscious mind. And uh, later, uh, I mean the last step we want to do is record the dreams. So how are you going to record the dreams? You are going to have a dreams diary or journal and um, what I suggest you to do is to have a, a journal, paper journal, uh, electronic journal, whatever helps you. Um, I personally record a voice message. I find it very, very com comfortable, very convenient to record a voice message. So I record a voice message and this is faster. And you can avoid uh, many of the sudden movements that come after just starting to wake up and regaining uh, full consciousness. So you will try to remember everything, record the voice message, and later you can transcribe from the voice message. And uh, one advantage of this is that um, you can give many more details and more quickly than if you just start writing. This is what I do. This is uh, what I think is a good idea. There are different applications for the phones that can help you to do this, or if you have just a tape recorder or whatever kind of recorder for voice. I personally recommend uh, Telegram or Viber or Signal. <clears throat> Why I recommend this? Because these have uh, some kind of a note to yourself uh, feature where you can just uh, record the messages and you don't need to send them to anyone else. They are available in your app. And these apps are available in many platforms, including uh, the phone and also in the desktop. So if you have a personal computer, uh, you can access the same, the same audio in all platforms. And um, they are free, free applications and they don't really store the files or the audio in your phone. So if you were to lose your phone, uh, your notes won't, won't be lost. So this is something very good. And uh, like I said, this is what I do and you are free to do it as you wish. Another advantage of using a paper notebook or a paper journal is that you have some abilities uh, for drawing. You can draw things from your dreams, so that will be very interesting. Uh, talking about myself, I am not a very good uh, drawer, so I, I can I can use this. Uh, it won't be very useful if I draw something. I don't have very good skills for this. And the main thing about the diary is to continue recording your dreams every day, every day, every day. This will just create um, a positive feedback loop, you know, and uh, the fact that you're recording your dreams over the course of uh, many days, you can do this basically your entire life and it will be very useful, very, very interesting. Um, the main thing why we're writing the dreams is because uh, we want to be able to observe some repeating patterns. So these repeating patterns, uh, will make it easier to continue doing the next steps in the in the method in the course that I'm going to mention to you. So having it in paper makes it easy because you have the opportunity to, to highlight different areas of uh, whatever you are dreaming and it will be uh, more easy to do this than just uh, going over a voice message. So the positive feedback loop is that the more you record your dreams, the easier will become to remember dreams in the following day. So this is uh, a very good, uh, good feature that is a um, self-reinforcing process. So the more you do it, the better you become at it. And here we are going to use the patterns. The patterns is everything that you see in your diary, in your uh, diary that repeats itself. So if you start to see some pattern developing or things that uh, appear in your dreams commonly, 
This is what I will refer to as a pattern. And uh, you will use the reality test together with the pattern to create a habit. This is what we're going to do. So during, uh, you are going to perform reality tests during daytime when you see a detail that is part of a repeating pattern from your dreams. For example, if you see repeatedly uh, cats in your dreams, okay, so this is a pattern that is repeating. Uh, several times you have seen cats in different dreams, in different days. So in, in the daytime, whenever you see a cat, you are going to perform a reality test. And what is, this is going to do, if you do this uh, several days, you know, uh, there is even psychology around how to develop habits. Some people say 21 days is necessary to develop a habit. Some people say even three months. So there are different opinions about this. Regardless, you're going to continue to, to do this. And habits start to form early, but only become you know stronger as time passes by. So a habit can even become to form even after just one week of doing this, maybe even sooner than that. So that's what you want to do. You want to create a habit so that uh, this habit will repeat itself when you're dreaming. So going back again to the example, if you were seeing cats during your dream, and then during the daytime, whenever you see a cat, you do a, a reality test. This reality test, when it becomes a habit, it will repeat when you're dreaming. So this is what we want to do. Uh, create a habit uh, and then see the habit repeating itself when you have the trigger. So the pattern will become the trigger for the reality test. And what is a reality test? Uh, there are different kinds of reality tests. Uh, I'm just going to mention some of them. One of them will be pulling a finger, counting the numbers of fingers in your hand, trying to push a finger through your palm, just jumping, uh, observing clocks and watches. Uh, so what, what happens is that you know what is the natural behavior or what is the normal or usual daytime behavior of these actions. So when you pull a finger in daytime, nothing special happens. But if you're dreaming and you pull your finger, the finger will stretch like if it was made of some kind of elastic material. If you count the number of fingers in your hand, you know there are five, but when you're dreaming, sometimes the number of fingers will be higher or smaller than, than the number of fingers usually present in a human hand. So this will be something unusual and this is exactly what we want. For example, trying to push a finger through your palm during daytime, nothing will happen. But if you do this when you're dreaming, your, your finger will actually go through your palm and you will be able to see that this is uh, a sign that you're not uh, you're no longer you know in the daytime and you're actually in a dream state same for jumping uh, in the dream if you jump probably you will jump very high or you will even start to fly so these are the reason for this reality test observing clocks and watches is uh, same clocks one sometimes will uh, have random numbers on them or they will run counterclockwise instead of uh, going in the normal, usual direction, clocks uh, run. So this is the reason why you're doing the reality test. The reality test is going to tell you whether you're in a dream state or in daytime. And at first, this will seem silly when you're in the daytime doing it, but uh, they are not going to be silly when you're dreaming. And that's when, you know, the big, big result will come from this. Then you will ask yourself some questions. Uh, for example, you are to ask yourself, am I dreaming? What is the purpose of this question? The, the question of uh, am I dreaming is uh, the intention is to raise your awareness, uh, awake your consciousness and bring it back to the present moment. So you start to analyze your, your, your person, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through in the moment and become aware of uh, your your place in, let's say, in the universe. Uh, so this brings back your consciousness to the present moment, and this will create the desired effect of uh, questioning whether you're dreaming or not. Some other useful questions are, where am I or why am I here? 
these questions have again the, the same purpose that we want, which is uh, raise our awareness, awake our consciousness, bring the consciousness to the present moment, to the present uh, place where we're at, and this will have the all the desired effects that that uh, we we want to achieve. You can also come up with your own reality test, you know, so you can be creative and just decide uh, what works best for you. So what is the result of the reality test? Uh, let's take, for example, the reality test of uh, trying to push your finger through your palm. So you're dreaming and then you push your finger through your palm and they actually the finger goes through. Then you will become surprised. And that's the moment when you realize that you're dreaming. So this, um, the effect of the reality test can be somehow maybe scary, surprising. So you are to remain calm, you know, con contain your excitement, because over excitement will usually wake you up. Uh, but, that, but that's only the start of the process. Once you realize you're dreaming, you can start to explore the world. You need to know that you are safe. Everything that you do in this realm will not hurt you in your in your body. So whatever you do in this area of uh, the universe or different dimensions, where whatever is the case, there are different explanations for this world. They will not have any negative consequences on the physical world. So you can explore and try different things. There are really no limits to what you can do. You can just enjoy your experience and do whatever you want. Uh, there are many different things you can do, uh, including uh, flying or other things that uh, most people never experience in their usual. So the, the final part of the course is uh, this part about stop dreaming. So what I mean with this is that the interesting side effect of lucid dreaming are that it will wake up your consciousness both during your dream time and your daily life. Because during the day you're practicing becoming aware of whether you're dreaming or not. And this produces this very interesting uh, side effect that you're also becoming more aware of your daily life and this will have some very interesting side effects that you will have uh, much more positive results in your life. You will not become so identified. You will not feel so much a victim of your current circumstances. And uh, as part of your life uh, in your dream state, you can uh, become more productive and more creative. Uh, you can write literary creations. You can write uh, uh, poems or anything. You can compose music, create uh, all kinds of art while you are dreaming. And all of these you can bring it back to the physical world and you can, you know, uh, make it materialize all these creations. And this is something that uh, it is argued that a lot of people in the past were doing uh, effectively. You can even do some uh, scientific discoveries. It is uh, legendary that some people uh, made some interesting scientific discoveries while they were dreaming. So it is argued that maybe did these uh, discoveries while they were in a um, lucid dreaming state, even if it wasn't called like that back in the time. So this is something very good. And you, since you're doing this uh, consciously, the the results can be very spectacular. You can uh, improve your life and really in so many ways uh, develop uh, new skills, acquire knowledge. So you can learn anything you want during your dream state and because uh, the dream realm has uh, the time works in a different way, you have practically uh, unlimited time to practice all these and you have a very useful way to use all that, all those hours that you're usually just uh, doing nothing and you can do something positive for your life. You can learn new languages or basically any skills. You can overcome fears, traumas, insecurities. is a, a, a great way for self-improvement 
So that's why I definitely uh, have uh, the best opinion about the, this particular topic of lucid dreaming. So that's all I wanted to share with you uh, today. Um, it's a very interesting topic and I'm going to make it part of a challenge. So I will make some future videos uh, yes, to give feedback of what is my experience. <coughs> And as always, I ask you to please leave me some comments if you have any questions or anything else in the comment section of the video. Please like the video, uh, share in social media, subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.